Yo, what up, a-holes? Thank you for tuning into the Holistic A-Hole Podcast. My name is Eric Levi, and I'm the Holistic A-Hole, the mommy blogger with balls, the inconvenient truth of health. How's it going out there in podcast land? Hope you're having a great day whenever you're listening to this. Uh, It's a glorious time, uh, and today I want to talk about Kanye West. What? Kanye? Yeezy? I want to talk about Kanye West meeting with our dear president, old Donald Trump. Now, some of you a-holes know that I do have a, um, a, uh, an affinity for uh, our president. I'm a, I'm a supporter. I don't know if I'm a uh, Trump supporter, as some of you like to classify people, uh, because that always kind of comes with like a negative connotation. But I'm a supporter of the president. I was a supporter of the last president. I was not a supporter of Bush. But... Um, yeah, you should support the president because your president is trying to do the best for the country. Despite what you read on the Huffington Post and CNN, uh, we're in a pretty good spot right now. Uh, although, yeah, we, we should be out of all these wars. Uh, we shouldn't be leveraging so much of our prosperity on debt. But this is the train that took off a long time ago. Uh, And I think, you know, Trump's doing a good job. If you're a business owner, you think Trump's doing a good job. And uh, and old Kanye West has come out in the last year as a full-on Trump supporter. And a lot of people got some problems with that. But this a-hole, this holistic a-hole, is a supporter of old Yeezy supporting old Donald Trump. And uh, on Thursday, this all culminated in a lovely lunch press conference uh, meeting with Kanye West and Donald Trump and also Jim Brown, which nobody's talking about. Because Jim Brown, no matter what color you are, white, black, Hispanic, Chinese, whatever you are, uh, you got to show a lot of love to a guy like Jim Brown. That dude has done more for the black community than a lot of people. He's done more for humanity than a lot of people. That dude, when they talk about brave and unselfish, could have been the greatest athlete of all time and then quit into a prolific football career to do work in the black community. So the fact that Kanye has the endorsement of a dude like Jim Brown uh, says a lot. And so they sat down in the Oval Office, old Kanye, Jim Brown, and old Trump, and they they just talked. It was interesting to watch, you know, because Trump gets a bad rap, right, for being just so out of touch with the people. And, you know, he probably is when you grow up rich and you you go to schools like the Wharton Business School and you you live this, you know, New York City corporate life. Yeah, you're going to be disconnected. But I think what he does is he's so personable that he really can connect with just about everybody. And I, I do find it hard that when people meet Trump, I find it hard to believe that people aren't at the same time charmed by him. Like you have to really have your defensive mechanisms up at full force to not be charmed, at the very least, by a dude like Trump, which probably shows why he's gotten as far as he has in life. Like, we could all do ourselves a favor, and even if you don't like the president, even if you're against his politics and policies, even his history as a real estate developer, um, you have to be, I mean, just admiring how people act around this guy, you know? They, they really do respect the dude, you know? Um, despite what you fucking read, that all of it is such horseshit. Nowhere is that more clear than what happened on Thursday when Kanye and Trump sat down. And I don't know if there was an agenda per se, but Kanye sat down with Trump and just really hashed out, you know, his thoughts as to, I mean, what's going on in the country, what's going on in the black community, specifically in Chicago, where there's just from what I've read, just insane chaos happening. And this didn't happen, by the way. This is what never gets talked about. Uh, All of the violence in Chicago did not start happening under Trump's watch. That started happening under Obama's watch. A lot of black-on-black violence in the city that Obama came out of in the first place. But yet somehow Trump's the racist. Somehow Trump is the one who, you know, supports the white nationalists. And yet all of the black on black blood is not on his hands black on black violence uh blood i should say and 
What's interesting to me is you can go on a website like the Huffington Post and you can read about this this meeting that went down between uh, between Trump and between um, Kanye. And, you know, it's all the wild things that Kanye said, you know, uh, here's the top 10 wild things that that Kanye said to Trump. And that's just I mean, come on. Anytime you see a listicle, anytime you see a, a, like a the five things that that Trump says about uh, Stormy Daniels, you know, it's just clickbait. All of that stuff is clickbait. These BuzzFeed writers, these HuffPo writers, these, you know, mommy bloggers, these CNN people, they're just writing clickbait because that's how they get more money. When you get more numbers on your website traffic, when you amp that up, you get more uh, affiliate money. You get more advertising money. That's what this all is. That That's why you always see Trump in the news, not because Trump is necessarily newsworthy, but because they know that people are so triggered that they're going to instantly click, and the more uh, the more salacious the headline is, the more clicks they get. It means the more money they get, which means the more in business they stay, which means the more limos uh, and and Mercedes and Jaguars that people like Anderson Cooper and uh, who's the other guy, Tom Brokaw, and all these fucking hacks that work for the mainstream press. That's the more cars and boats and and women they get to harass. By the way, they're the ones more guilty of sexual harassment than anybody in the goddamn White House. So what I found interesting, more interesting than any of the wild things that Kanye said, like when he said that we should have the fly as president, he should have the the fly as plane built by Apple or something, uh, which was pretty hilarious. Uh, He definitely cursed a few times too, which I thought was just brilliant. Um, What he was talking about was building industry in these low-income communities, To me, this is the biggest, most effective response to dig a community who is dealing with high levels of violence, high levels of poverty, high levels of drugs and homelessness and all these terrible statistics is you start building factories and you start building manufacturing plants and you start building stores and and places where people can actually get jobs that do things. This is how you start building these communities back up. And nowhere in any of these clickbait articles are you going to find that that Kanye actually stated, and Trump, of course, agreed with, uh, you're not going to find that anywhere, which is insulting. It's insulting to you, the reader and the viewer and the listener, because this is the shit that we need in this country. You know, for years, throughout most of my lifetime, we've just watched industry leave the United States. We've watched it leave the United States because we've leveraged ourselves to the tilt with, you know, the Federal Reserve and the dollar being, you know, just overinflated and underinflated and, you know, uh, companies, taxes going up and up and up so the federal government can make more money. And, of course, what are they doing? They've offshored everything. They've sent all the manufacturing to China, to Vietnam, to Ireland, to Thailand, to all these places. This is where all the American businesses are, whether it's their main address or their manufacturing address, it's all gone. And Trump was calling this out. You know, this is what turned me on to Trump during the campaign. I don't care about the locker room talk. I don't care about any of that stuff. But when Trump says, when they ask him, how do we get jobs in America? Well, we got to lower the tax rate for the for the corporations. Sorry, I know you don't like the big corporations. I don't like the big corporations. I know you don't like the CEOs making, you know, 500 times what a low-level worker makes, but this is the world we live in, dude, you know? I don't know what to tell you. You know, you can't fix this any other way. You can't say, "Well, we need to charge the the corporations like Nike and Adidas and uh, you know, Ford and Jaguar, I don't know if they're American, uh, and you know, uh, Old Navy and all these companies that manufacture their stuff overseas, we can't charge them more taxes because they're just not going to pay them. They're just going to keep shipping stuff offshore to avoid those taxes. This is the market economy. This is, I mean, how it works. This is basic human f- human function, functionality, right? We want to all make more money. The poor people want to make more money, but you know what the poor people want to do, or at least the people who are, you know, uh, uh, like well-off 
but they're poor, you know, like these 20-somethings and 30-somethings who are, uh, you know, too depressed to work, you know, they're dog walkers or they're, they're working at Starbucks or whatever. What they want you to think is that the only way that they're going to dig themselves out of poverty is by raising the taxes on wealthier people so they can get more of that money. So they can do what? So they cannot contribute anything to the economy. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Maybe you might get a thousand dollars more on your uh, on your taxes, while an, uh, a rich billionaire has to pay half the half the money he makes every single year to pay for you. That's not how the shit works. Okay. If you own something, that's yours. If you start a bakery in your hometown, and that bakery is everything you love. You pour your heart, your sweat, your tears, just hours and hours. Maybe it puts a stress on your relationship. Maybe you get divorced, but you love that goddamn bakery. You want to keep all of the money you make from that bakery. You're pouring in 15, 16, 17 hours a day. You're doing taxes. You're dealing with inventory. You're dealing with employees. This thing is your heart and soul. And when the government comes in and says, sorry, we got to take more of your money, uh, that doesn't do anything for the business. That crushes the business. That prevents the business owner from being able to hire more people. The business owner can't hire more people. Yeah, maybe you're broke and you got an extra grand on your taxes, but you're not making money every month. You need a job. People need jobs. People in these low-income neighborhoods, they need jobs. They need to go to work. They're not supposed to be sitting around on their ass watching Maury at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. They should be at work, making a livable wage, providing for their families, providing for their kids, for their wives, for their husbands, for their fucking family, being able to pay their funeral costs when somebody in their family passes away. Uh, you know, being able to afford to put gas in their car. You don't just get that because the government just starts spreading the money around more evenly. No, you get that because manufacturers and companies and corporations have more capital available to pay their employees. This is how we start building up these impoverished neighborhoods. And this is the shit that Kanye's talking about. You know, people want to make fun of him because he goes on Saturday Night Live and says this and goes on some crazy thing. You know what? I listen to Kanye. I would do the same goddamn thing because that show is an absolute disaster. That show is a shell of what it used to be. It's corporate. It's garbage. It's liberal agenda. It's not funny in the slightest bit. Fuck them. Disrespect the shit out of them. The fucking, the, 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 the big head guard who just decides what should be in the media and what shouldn't. The mainstream media. Kanye completely disrespects them, just like Trump does. As well they should. They give them no love. No love whatsoever because they dare to think outside the mainstream thought. This is what this is all about. It's not about the hat. It's not about you know, uh, 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 what is it, uh, toxic masculinity or locker room talk or, you know, the rich versus the poor. This is about, this is about the war of ideas. This is about this age-old question of how do we get more money into the communities? And the policies of the last 30 years have been absolute bankrupt, completely bankrupt. And you should not be impoverished here in America, okay? And the only reason that people like Jeff Bezos and uh, Tim Cook and these billionaires have so much money is because we've allowed them to take their manufacturing offshore and, uh, and basically bankrupt the country. That's what we've done. They have not gotten any less poor. They've gotten so much richer because of the dog shit policies of people like Obama, Bush and the Clintons. And you know what? A dude like Trump, he's fucking making waves. He ain't perfect. He ain't hitting it out of the park every single time. But when he hits, when he makes contact, he absolutely smashes it. And uh, and a dude like Kanye realizes that. And I was watching Kanye talk and I was like, man, like what he's saying right now that, you know, the, 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 the minds of the kids, you know, they need to get off the phone. We need to challenge them in school. We need to bring the arts back into the school. We need to, to, to teach kids more disciplines. We got to get rid of this, this standardized schooling that we subject kids to that the only thing they need to do is just learn how to circle the right answer out of four answers. That shit is over. We're not making smart people anymore. We're making robots that are going to work in Amazon factories, making $15 an hour, which by the way, in 10, 20 years, that's not going to be shit. 
That's not going to be anything. In fact, the whole reason that Bezos has installed this policy of putting 15 bucks an hour is because he wants his competitors to also pay that much so that they can lose more money paying their employees and essentially crush them. If you think a guy like Jeff Bezos has your back, <laughs> sorry, everybody, uh, you will probably also believe in Santa Claus, which means you are probably the actual one who's mentally sick. So, uh, yeah. Unless you're an a-hole, then you're fucking brilliant. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I highly support Kanye West. I'm so excited. I'm so inspired to see a dude like Trump and a dude like Kanye get together. It threatens the left so much. It threatens the right so much. It threatens the fucking status quo. And this is what we need in this country. This is what we need. If you ever dreamed about owning a business, if you ever had a vision for, you know, the thing that you can create that nobody else can create and you wanted to put there on the market, put it out on the market and, and bring it to people and serve people and make money and, 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 and support your family, living your dream, there has never been a better time to do that than right now. So if you haven't seen the video, make sure you go check it out on YouTube. Uh, I'll be honest, if you type in Kanye Trump, you're going to have to like sift through a bunch of like mainstream media crap, you know, little like tidbits of, you know, who's that guy? Brian Stelter from CNN, you know, being all offended that Kanye's wearing a Make America Great Again hat or, you know, the, the hacks at CNN or Huffington Post. You have to get through that stuff. But if you can find the video where they're actually talking about the issues, it really is fascinating and a little funny, you know, just to watch Trump be like, ah, Kanye loves me. Look at Kanye. I got Kanye loving me right now. Like, this is the greatest thing ever. It's just enjoyable for me to watch. So uh, if you enjoy this podcast, make sure you share it with those you love. Go on to iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Leave a five-star review. If you haven't done it yet, subscribe to the podcast. Go join the Holistic A-Holes Facebook group. And uh, if you're new to the podcast, make sure you go catch up on all the episodes you missed and uh, tell all your friends about it. And you know what to do. Just come back on the next one. I love you all. Have a great weekend. Peace.